Amen. That was so good. <coughs> this has been amazing, Elizabeth. Amen. And I'm just grateful to be here with Bishop Hammond and Elizabeth and Pastor Jackie, El Paso Jackie, and everybody else that's here. Um, God is doing amazing things. Now, we are in a war season, as you all know. And the portion that the Lord asked me to bring today is to speak out of, well, actually, I'm using my iPad for the first time, using it teaching. So I have my notes here as well. So if I mess up there, have mercy on me. Um, <coughs> the Lord asked me to speak out of Second Kings about uh, King Hezekiah. And in this portion of scripture in 2 Kings 18, he was going through, he was doing amazing things. He was a reformer. And what he did was he tore down the altars of Baal, and he, he really fought against the, um, the idolatry in the land. But then there came a part where their intimidation started to creep in. And, um, you know, and I know a lot of us, especially in the churches, you know, I'm sure many of them started out right. But then the pressure of the enemy of intimidation, that spirit of witchcraft, kicks in. And, and what had happened with um, Hezekiah, he started to compromise. And he was willing to sell out to um, Sennacherib. And, and he, he sold some of the portion, of the silver and the gold in the house of the Lord. And uh, Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple. What was he thinking? And from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid, and he gave it to the king of Assyria. Now, how many of you know that wasn't a good thing to do, right? But so many times when you're under that, when you come into a region and you're under that spirit that has tried to overtake that region, it's easy sometimes to submit to it. But that's why you have to be in a prayer mode. That's why you have to know who you are in Christ, that we are warriors, that we are not to back down, that we are not to buckle under the pressure of the system. You know, Jackie was talking about the woke uh, mentality and and, you know, we know that so many of the churches have allowed that spirit to infiltrate the church. But we say no to that. But you see, it's easy. Like, like you know, we can say, you know, unless we are a are, are warring watchman group of people, this remnant of people that will not bow our knee, then if we weren't that type, we'd be back in, we'd be, uh, you know, in agreement with that woke mentality. But you see, the spirit of the Lord is upon us here. And my word to to Atlanta here, my word to Georgia is, you are a force to be reckoned with. And the spirit of the Lord wants you to know that you have to know who you are in Christ and the authority that we operate in. We are an army. And the Lord says we are warriors. He is the man of war, the Bible says, and he's the Lord God of the angel armies, and that's who we are. And we have to know in whom we believe and that the word of God has final say and that we are to war with the word. In Daniel, it said that the angels came because of the word that Daniel released. Are the angels responding to the words that you're releasing? So here in this portion, as you read on, you know, Sennacherib and, and uh, it's Rabshakeh, and that was his title. He was a field commander. He was a general there. He was challenging them. And he was saying, are you going to believe the words? Are you going to listen to Hezekiah? Are you going to listen to him that he trusts in God? Isn't that what the enemy is doing to the leaders now? Isn't that what's happening in the churches where they're saying, are you going to listen to these crazy Christians? Are you going to listen to their words? The, even the leaders in the, in the government that are Christians have bad, bowed their knee to bow. But the Lord is saying to you, do you trust? Do you believe the word of the Lord? Do you believe that he is the God of all impossibility? Do you believe that, that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world? I do. And let me tell you something. The, the Lord, the Bible says in Psalm 2, that the, that the Lord sits and laughs at the derision and the plans of the enemy. It may look for a season like he's, the enemy's getting ahead, but God has final say. And so we'll see over here in this portion, it, you know, Hezekiah, I mean, um, Rabshakeh is really tormenting him and really giving him a hard time. And, 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 you know, Hezekiah felt bad because he said, I made a mistake. But thank God for the mercy of God, that mercy triumphs over judgment, amen? And that God is on our side. And even if you have bowed, even if you messed up, the Lord is saying, get right back on track. So then it goes down to uh, I, um, 2 Kings 19. And this is the portion I want to zero in on. It says, when King Hezekiah heard, you know, what Rabshakeh was saying, he tore his clothes. 
And Elakiam, you know, I'm Italian here, so have mercy on my soul here, who was over the household of Shebna, the scribe, and, and they were covered with sackcloth. But get, guess what they did? They cried out to the prophet. See, prophets are so important to release the word of the Lord, to break through the structure, to break through the hindrances. You have the word of God in your mouth. And this is what, why we're here today. It's not just to have a meeting. This is to break and shatter. We were breaking the back of the enemy when we were releasing, when we were in warfare. That wasn't, a spe- that wasn't exercise. We were in the realm of the spirit breaking through. I mean, we were getting a workout too, so it was twofold. But, um, but listen, it says here, Hezekiah, they said to him, Hezekiah, this is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy for the children have come to birth, but there's no strength to bring forth. Well, let me tell you something. Where it says there's, where that word is birth, it means to break forth. And that word to break, to, uh, where it says there is no strength to bring them forth, that means to travail. See, the enemy has tried through his lies, through his words, to break down the intercessors, the watchmen, to prevent you from travailing. But I decree to you, you have strength. The Lord is imparting a strength into each and every one of us to travail and to break through like we've never had before because it is our travail, it is our prophetic declarations, it's our words that will break the back of the enemy, and he will not have final say. And so that's what happened here because it didn't look good for a season, but he said, listen, we're lifting up our prayers for that remnant that's left. That, and you know what? Where that word in verse 4 where it says, God will hear us, and therefore lift up your prayer for the remnant. That word prayer means to judge. When we are praying and decreeing, we are judging the spirit realm and saying, you back down. You will bow at the name of Jesus Christ. See, we have to understand the authority. We have to understand the power, the dunamis power, that dynamo, that dynamite power. Do you understand? There's explosive power in each and every one of us. We cannot be asleep. God is awakening the body. God is awakening us to be that army that he's always called us to be. The world, the enemy, you know, in Acts chapter, when you read through Acts, they turned the world upside down. They didn't have all what we have. They believed the word, but they prayed. They fasted. They, they did not allow the enemy to, to silence their mouth. And so over here, oh, Lord, they were, they were just going for it. And so listen, in verse 6, it says, Isaiah said to them, the prophet said, Thus you shall say to your master, thus says the Lord, do not be afraid of their words. Atlanta, don't be afraid of the government. Atlanta, don't be afraid of the homosexuals in the community, in the churches, or the leaders. Or don't be afraid of the lies of the enemy. Don't you listen to what they're saying. Don't you let it get in your spirit, man. The spirit of God is saying, you speak the word of the Lord, and you decree a reversal of what they're doing. It says here, do not be afraid of the word which you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria has blasphemed, and surely I will send my spirit upon him. Ooh, Lord, I need to look at my notes here. And so he said, listen, there's a war cry that, that, that's being released here. And he said, there's a prayer, there's a remnant that's rising up that has a hope in Jesus and that they're not going to back down. And so what did Hezekiah do? He, 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 he had uh, the letters that, that were sent to him. And it says here, and Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and he read it and he spread it out. Hey, listen, get your journal, spread it out before the Lord. What's the prophetic words that the Lord has given you? What are the decrees? What are the promises that have been released over Georgia? Spread it out. Bring it before the Lord and say, Lord, now is the time. This is a turning point season we're in. It's not, it's not where we've been. This is, there's an acceleration on what God is doing. And so um, it says here, oh, Lord, God of Israel, you are enthroned. You alone are God. You're, king, you're, you're, God, you're God over the kingdoms of this earth, and you have made the heavens and the earth. Bend down your ear and listen. Open your eyes, O oh God. Georgia, hear the word of the Lord. God is opening up his ears to your cry. Hear the taunting words of Sennacherib, of the enemy, of the government, of the lies in the churches, which has been sent to talk and defy the living God. And the Lord said, it says, it is true, Lord, that the Assyrian kings have devastated the nations. They've devastated the land. They have stolen. They have lied. They're trying to bring that nonsense into the school system of perversion. Come on. It says here, 
He says, but, but you, can, you can destroy them. Now, O Lord our God, save us from the hand of the enemy that all the kingdoms of the earth will know without any doubt that you alone are God. And here's what the Lord said. Here's what the prophet said. And because of your raging against me and your arrogance, which I have heard for myself, Georgia, hear the word of the Lord. I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth, and I will make you return by the same road on which you came. Hallelujah. That is the word of the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something. It looked like Rabshakeh had it going on there, but, but they, they were defeated, and the Lord showed up. And it says here that the angel of the Lord came, and you know the story, the angel of the Lord came and, and killed over 185,000 of them. And so the Lord wants you to know. And again, I know I'm speaking to many of you that, that you, know, you know this stuff, but God is saying he's raising up a whole other level of warriors. There's a, a warring remnant. We're not going to look to the left nor to the right. We're going to be single-eyed focused like a laser beam, and we're going to take out the plan of the enemy. But it's going to take that force you said it earlier, of a united force of everyone warring together, knowing that we have this. How did they take down the Berlin Wall? It was through prayer. It was through and people like a battering ram interced, interceding and, and saying, no, I'm not taking no. I'm not taking no from the enemy. The perversion that's been in the school systems, in the government, will not stand. And we decree there is an overturning and an overthrowing of the, the homosexual agenda and the perversion that has been in the school system. We say enough is enough. And we push you back in the realm of the spirit. Now listen, God is raising us all up. You can stand. God is raising us all up to be that warring people. We're in an army. And there are many generals here. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a five-star general that's here. And before I came, the Lord had been speaking to me about, you know, just five-star generals and generals and, 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 and really researching them out. I have been prophesied many times that I am a general in the army. There are many generals here. But someone had given me, he works somewhat with the military, he gave me, this is the uh, insignia of the five-star general. And the five-star general is only active during wartime. We're in a war season. But I'd love for Bishop Hammond, if he can come up, because Bishop Hammond is a five-star general. And I want to give this to Bishop Hammond. And you have to know, oh, I'm so sorry. You have to know, I did not want to give him that. But, but the Lord said to me, because someone gave that to me, but he is a five-star general. So, Bishop, I just wanted you to be honored with that. I honor you as okay. a five-star general. And I, yeah, well, I don't know, yes. But I also wanted Bishop to release that warring mantle on us. And and about 20 years ago, Cindy Jacobs prophesied that God had made me a five-star general. After that, God had that angelic visitation with Gabriel, I mean with uh, Michael. And then God gave me the warfare strategy to start going to 32 nations and did war against Satan's plan to start World War III between 1996 and 2001. And we went to all these 32 nations continually and then in the spring of 2001 god said you've won the war it won't have to be fought in the natural that particular time and so i do know you can if, I, if we can affect the, the world war three the devil wants to start then we, how much will we do with the lord georgia yeah. <laughs> yeah. amen so let me release that warrior because a lot of ones one star and two star and three star generals yours and lieutenant colonels and a lot of others Father, right now, you authorize me to be a five-star general, and I authorize some generals, your Lord, to be raised up, to raise up an army. God, and some good drill sergeants to train and equip. God, there are people. We just release the warrior. God, you birthed the uh, army of the Lord movement in 2016, and now, Lord, it's time for it to be activated more and come alive. And we thank you, Lord, for the warriors and for the generals and for the officers and for those that's going to be used of you from this place that's going to affect the Georgia, America, and around the world. In Jesus' name, amen.